What's up, ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel. What exactly is going to be the subject of our today's video? I'm going to be speaking about the most common types of trauma that people get influenced by during their evolution as a human being. What are the ways that people get traumatized? What are the most common ways that this happens to a person? If you want to go deeper with understanding the nature of trauma and how it affects you in your life and how it changes a lot of things in life, this is definitely going to be a video that you're going to find interest in. I would highly recommend staying tuned. I'll see you on the other side. All right, let me first start with introducing myself just in case you don't know who I am. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I'm a professional occultist. I'm fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck. I'm studied when it comes to planetary energies in association with astrology. And I'm also studied when it comes to trauma and the nervous system. So with that being said, let's go right into our today's subject. This is definitely going to be a more intimate based subject. There's a lot to learn about this specific subject at hand. So let's dive into it. So trauma, as I've discussed many times, you know, all of us have been through trauma. All of us go through trauma. There's not one person on this planet that is living that has not experienced some form of trauma. It's a part of our evolutionary experience. We have to go through it in order to re-remember the true self and that is literally what the evolution is about okay it's it's sort of like that catalyst and that tough resistance that allows us the space and even we could say the opportunity to better know ourself our true self and that's a beautiful thing overall so what are the most common ways that people develop trauma so in other words what are the roots of trauma how do people receive trauma in their life what are the most common ways that someone becomes traumatized? So there are going to be three primary factors that I'm going to be talking about in this today's video that are 99.9% .9 of the time going to be at the root of your trauma as you're listening to this. All right, so let's go into it. So trauma happens in three primary ways for the most part. One of them is consistent stress trauma. So this literally means that when sh when you're living a stressful lifestyle where you're always on go and you do not have time to kind of be still with yourself, you don't have time to rest, relax, digest your life experience, this is going to be a very stressful lifestyle that always has you on go. So to give you an example, this is like working at a job that is always calling you to come in, even on your off days. And when you're at the job, it's like consistent and constant stress. Someone always needs your attention. They're always giving you their problems. There's always issues. You always have to solve everything. You have to put everything together, you know, in complete chaos. And you can't even get your normal days off because your job's calling you back in. This is an example of consistent stress. Okay, this can be traumatizing because it's it's not giving the person a chance to literally digest and rest from what they're going through or what they're experiencing. So to give you another analogy, this is literally like the same concept as going to the gym, working out the same muscle every single day, eight hours a day. It's like your body is going to need to rest in order to repair that muscle and build it the way it needs to be built. And if you don't give it that time, that repair time, that rest time, you're going to overwork the muscle to the point where it's not going to grow the way that you want it to grow. And it, you're at a much higher likelihood to get injured. So this is how we oftentimes get a lot of trauma when we're living in stressful life situations too often. We have like no time for ourselves, no time to just relax. So imagine going to a stressful job, nine to five, coming back home to a stressful environment, a stressful home environment, 
where it's the same type of energy. Everyone needs you. Everyone wants you to solve problems. Everyone's in, in arguments, chaos. This is how a lot of people uh, receive trauma because it's so overwhelming to the body, to the nervous system, that it literally starts to repress uh, negative emotions in the body. And when you're in these really stressful environments, you're always in a state of basically fight, flight, or freeze. You're always on go. You, you, don't, you don't even have time to really feel what you're feeling. It's just what's next? What do I say next? How do I communicate next? How do I solve this problem? How do I make sure everything's okay? How do I bring order to the chaos? You don't have time to just be with yourself and realize, wow, I am really stressed out and I do not feel good. I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm afraid. This is how a lot of people get traumatized. All right. Now we're going to move on to the second way that a lot of people receive their trauma. This is going to be called shock trauma. Okay. This is the type of trauma where something happens in our life that literally shocks our system. This is a pretty common one as well. So this is the example of you, let's say you're hanging out with your friends. One of your friends goes across the street and a car hits your friend. That is a shock trauma. That's like a moment that's like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I just saw that. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe, you know, my close friend just got hurt in front of me. Okay, so this is one example of what a shock trauma is. There are so many other examples. I mean, I remember, for example, like one time I was walking on the streets of, of Miami and there was a lady in front of me and she literally passed out and she started having a seizure on the ground and then everyone had to run up to her and I was one of the people that had to help the situation and I had to sort of like re redirect traffic because she, she passed out like and fell onto the street. So I had to stay on the street and re redirect traffic to make sure they weren't going to hit her. And this all happened so quickly. So at the time, you know, I had a fairly regulated nervous system, not to the extent that I do now. And definitely I could have used some work back then. But at that time, that would, that would set the stage for a shock trauma. That was like a sudden experience. I didn't expect to see that. It was quite graphic. And there's a lot of room to get traumatized there. And I'm sure that there is some energy that I picked up from that time frame that I've had to process uh, throughout, you know, throughout that experience, you know, as time went on. So little, little events like that are what are shock traumas. Let's say you're going for a ride on your bike. You fall off your bike, you break your hand, right? That's a shock. That can be a shock trauma. Because in that moment, you're like, oh my gosh, my hand is fucked up. Ouch, this is so painful. Oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? That energy, that sensation, that fear, that emotion that's there goes inside of the body. And in that moment, we oftentimes we have to separate to survive the experience to figure out how do we save ourselves, How do we survive this experience? Rather than just being with the body and feeling the sensations. So once again, it's not that it's right or wrong that we have to separate to survive. It doesn't, it really doesn't have much to do with being right or wrong. Sometimes it's literally what we have to do to survive the experience. We have to enter into that survival state in order to survive. But we have to acknowledge that that was a shock trauma and there is emotion there that is going to stay there until we, we finally find that safety and then we can be present with the experience or we can be present with the emotions that were generated from the experience and in a way sort of go back to it in our mind or go back to it emotionally speaking, which is the hard part, but this is really how we heal. And that's why it's really important to have a safe environment to be able to do this level of processing and this level of feeling, all right? Because it's not going to happen right after you break your hand. You're not in a safe environment at that point. You have to go to the hospital they got to look at it. They got to do what they got to do. Maybe give you a cast, give you some painkillers or whatever it is. Then things start to even out. You start to feel a little bit more safe. Now you can start doing the processing. All right. So shock traumas is one of the root causes to how people get traumatized. And this, many of us have experienced this in life. Okay. Now the third root for how people are receiving their trauma is probably the most common one out of the three. And and look, you can have all three, right? Like I know in my life experience, I've dealt with all three of these traumas. 
consistent stress, shock trauma, and the third one that I'm about to mention. This is the most common though, and this is called early childhood developmental trauma. So this is going to be the trauma that most often happens when we are in our mother's womb all the way until the age of roughly 10. But the most significant time frame of when we receive a lot of this early childhood developmental trauma is when we're in the mother's womb to the age of three. So it's in that little range right there where some of the most significant trauma, some of the most significant negative emotions start to get stored in our little nervous systems because it's too much for us to process. We have no idea what's happening and we definitely don't have the education to know how to process. So we have to store it and we have to find a way to survive it. All right, at such a little age. So this can also, once again, extend out to the age of, I like to usually say 10 years old. So it's usually like in this time frame when we're the more younger version of ourself, where we are a lot more dependent on the world around us to understand how things work. How do we navigate life? How do we survive for ourselves? We have to sort of look to our parents. We have to look to our immediate family. We have to look to our immediate environments to understand how are we surviving here. So you can imagine from the age of, uh, you know, being in the mother's womb all the way to the age of 10, there's a lot of this looking outwards to figure out what's going on internally. All right. And if we're in environments that are very toxic and we're in dysregulated family dynamics or we've got just a, you know, poor environments that have a lot of chaos going on and maybe we don't have present families. Maybe our families are secluded. Maybe that they, they're doing their own thing and they're not really giving you enough time and attention and love and you're just left on your own to figure out how to move through life and you don't even know what to do and now you're confused and then there's fear there. So it's like there's a lot of different things that can happen at these younger ages and this is where most of us, most of you listening to this, this is the majority of where our trauma comes from, from these younger ages. So most of you, when you start to look towards your parents between the mother and the father or whoever it is that primarily raised you, this is going to be the majority of the source of where your traumas come from. Because the parents or the, the caregivers at the young age are the ones that we are looking to, to understand <clears throat> ourself and to understand how to survive. And unfortunately, what happens most of the time is we come into incarnation with families that didn't heal their own traumas. So that means that your grandparents, being your parents' parents, they passed on trauma to your parents and your parents, most of the times, didn't heal that trauma and they carried it and then they push it on you when you become incarnate. And if you're the rare person in the family that says, look, I'm not going to live this way. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to choose to be my true self and I'm going to choose to break this family curse or this family trauma, then you find yourself in that position where you have to become aware of these family dynamics and you have to start emotionally regulating. You have to start allowing yourself to feel and you have to start choosing a different path than the already cut out path that was set for you based on that family trauma. And it really all comes down to just having the intention of knowing your true self and going through the process of starting to feel your emotions, listen to your body's sensations, you know, make decisions in your life that are going to put you in a space where you can create safety so that you can do the emotional processing. And if any of you are listening to this now and this sounds like something that you're wanting to do or something that you're taking advantage of, definitely consider booking a mentorship with me because in this mentorship, I can help you establish this foundation and create safety so that you can do the deeper levels of integration of the true self. All right, that's at the second link below in the YouTube description, if you're interested, all right? 
So with that being said, you know, our parents are usually the source of where we receive most of our traumas. Now, they're not the only source by any means. We go through tons of traumas, you know, throughout our life with just different people we encounter, different situations, whatever the case is. But most of it is sourced in our parents. So this does not mean that the parents are bad. This doesn't mean your parents are evil. This doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just simply means that they didn't have the tools and they didn't have the education to know how to process their own trauma. So unconsciously, they projected their trauma and their pain onto you as the child. And most likely, most likely, your parents were just doing the best that they knew how to do to love you. But sometimes that's not what we actually need to feel that love. But once again, if our parents never healed their trauma, then they don't understand that and they don't know that most most of the times. So in their minds, they think they're just doing their best to love you. And in reality, their love is not, it's not being relayed properly to the child. So the child feels like they don't have love. The child feels disconnected, but the parents think they're loving the child, but the parents don't know that they're just projecting unconsciously their own issues to the child, all right? So once again, it has nothing to do with your parents being bad. It's just it's just a generational cycle that happens throughout the family lines over and over and over and over again until someone literally breaks that cycle. And if you're watching this video right now, you're hearing what I'm saying and you're resonating with it and you feel like you might be that person that's breaking the cycle, that's a big deal. Don't take that for granted. That is not a light thing by any means. That's that's a big responsibility. You are potentially shifting the entire trajectory of your bloodline. All right? And that's a that's a tall order right there. So, acknowledge that and appreciate that you're the person who's watching this video right now and that you're the one who's taking steps to going through this process to better love yourself first and foremost, to better integrate your true self, but also understanding this will affect your entire bloodline. All right, your entire, all your ancestors will be very pleased that you chose the path of your true self. This is what all of our ancestors truly want us to do. All right, and so many people don't know how to do that. So as I was saying, with that being said, we have to look at our parents. We have to look at the people who raise us. If you didn't have parents, like the mother and the father, who played those roles in your childhood? Those are the people that you want to look to. Okay, so if that was a brother or a sister to you, then it's them. If it is a mother and a father, it's definitely them. So look towards those archetypal figures of the parents and ask yourself, is there a possibility that a lot of the challenges that you're currently dealing with on an emotional level where you may be having a hard time feeling your emotions, you may know that you have some challenging emotions in your nervous system, but you're afraid to feel them. If you're aware of what some of those emotions are, whether it's fear, anger, sadness, loneliness, depression, isolation, anxiety, whatever it is, is there a chance that maybe these repressed emotions that are in your nervous system could have stemmed back to something that was related to your parents? Did your parents do something to you? Did they say something to you at some point in your early childhood that left you feeling like you can't trust yourself, that made you feel like you can't be who you truly are, that took away a sense of security because maybe your parents separated? All right, that's, that, this is an extremely traumatic circumstance that happens to a lot of people in our modern time that a lot of people they write off as if it's like, oh, that's so, it happens to everybody. You know, my parents separated when I was 10, you know, it sucks, but it is what it is. It happens a lot. You know, I'm not the only one, but in reality, that's an extremely traumatic situation. That's a really hard thing to go through for any child because the family, when the family's together is the the foundation, it's the security net. So what that, what that means in the, in the consciousness of the child is that my security is found in my family. This is what all children are looking for. They're looking for that foundation. They're looking for that security. 
And look, I'm not saying that your family was perfect. You may not, you may have had a family together that didn't have that sense of security. And I understand that. That's that's a a toxic, dysregulated family dynamic. And that happens often too. But some of us do have somewhat of a sense of security within our families, even if it is dysregulated. It's still like, okay, well, we still eat dinner at night. Or we still do some family things together. You know, we still like every maybe like weekend. Every other weekend, we, we, we might go to the park and walk, or we might watch a movie or something in the family room, right? So this, within the consciousness of the child, becomes the foundation. It really becomes the security net, so that when this child goes out to, let's say, school, and they deal with all these kids and all these different influences and peer pressure and people saying, this is how you should be, and this is how you should be, and this is what's cool, this is what isn't cool... When all that gets overwhelming and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know who I am, you can always fall back on your family foundation, on your family security net, where it's like, all right, with all these crazy influences happening when I'm at school, I know that when I go home, me and my family watch movies on Friday nights and it feels good. I don't care about anything else that happens in the family, you know, with all the other craziness and the arguing, I know on Friday nights... We watch a family movie together, and in that moment, I feel like I'm safe, and I feel good. This this little thing, as simple as it seems, can create an entire sense of security, safety, and a foundation within a child's consciousness. So when a family separates, that gets ripped away. It gets pulled from under the rug, and Quite oftentimes, in our modern times, separations happen in a very dysregulated way. It's not like, hey, you know, I think we're both better off if we go in our own path. You know, let's consider separating and let's make sure that our child is going to understand why we're separating and know that this is for the best of the family and also make sure they know they're still loved, right? So in the modern time we live in, this is not how most families separate. Usually it's an argument between the mother and the father, and one of them leaves, and the other one is upset, and they're both upset, so there's trauma in that. You know, the the mom and the dad get into an argument, traumatic, separate because of it, and now they don't like each other, or there's a lot of anger there, a lot of hatred even, right? And even resentment. A lot of resentment is usually common in these dynamics. And then the kid, the child, is like, what's going on now? My parents hate each other. Now I have to choose a side. So this leaves that this poor child in a moment where they had a family and there were certain things that gave them a sense of foundation. Now that's completely gone. And now they feel like they have to choose a side between their parents because most often one of the parents was probably a little bit more nurturing to the child than the other one. This just seems to happen most often. Usually there's one parent that's a little bit closer to the child where the other parent is a little bit more separated. So the child is probably going to gravitate towards the parent that's a little bit more caring and start to separate within their consciousness the other parent as being the bad guy or the person who's not good. So in simple terms, this is like your mom and your dad separating. You have a stronger relationship with your mother. When she leaves, you decide to go with her and then you start viewing your dad as a bad guy. You start viewing your dad as the one who's not the good one in the family or the one who ruined the relationship. And you start developing an internal anger and hatred similar to what your mom has towards your father. You develop the same energy towards your own father. And in reality, the zoomed out perspective of what's really happening is that both of your parents weren't even really supposed to be married in the first place. They were not the right dynamic. They were not the right connection. They, they met for a reason to have an experience together, a healing experience, but then they committed to something they weren't ready to commit to. They ended up getting married. They had a child in the process. And now because they got into something quicker than what they were ready to do, probably because of societal indoctrination, now they're traumatizing this child that they brought into this world. And now the child is in the cycle. And this child can break this cycle later down the road as they become more educated and as they go through more life experience. 
But sometimes this child never will break the cycle and they just go through the exact same patterns. They end up getting married when they're not ready. They end up getting a divorce, having a kid, traumatizing their kid, and it goes on and on and on. All right? So when does the craziness stop? So I, I say all of this just so that you as the listener can really self-reflect and ask yourself, wow, have I been through these dynamics? And if I have been through these dynamics, am I acknowledging the fear, the anger, and the sadness that I went through from these dynamics? Because this is how we start this actual integration process is first by acknowledging this energy exists within me. I am sad. I am afraid. I am scared. I am angry. We have to first acknowledge this. We can't play that role of like, oh, well, you know, it's sad that I went through that, but I'm stronger now. I don't feel the fear anymore. I don't feel sad anymore. You know, I've got a lot going for me. I'm doing big things in life. It's like, you can do that all you want, but you're only mentally overriding. And you can override as much as you want until your body and your nervous system gives out on you. Your body and your nervous system will burn out on you. It's only a matter of time. And when it burns out, you're going to be forced to face what was inside of you this whole time. So you could put on the mask of I'm stronger than this. I'm pushing through, you know, like I'm David Goggins. Nothing can stop me. And once you burn out and once you can't do what you do anymore with, the, with wearing the mask, once you don't have enough energy to supply the mask, now you're forced to face the true self. Now you're forced to start reconnecting with that inner child that went through the trauma from your past. And this is a beautiful process, even though it can be very scary, very challenging, and quite frankly, overwhelming at times, especially if you've been wearing a mask for a very long time in life and you're in your later years and now you've burnt out and now it's time to face all these things. But at some point, we all have to do this. And when we start doing it, we start actually feeling for the first time. We start getting in tune with our bodies. We start crying again. We start allowing ourselves to express aggression again. We start allowing ourselves to say, you know what? I am afraid right now. I may not even know why I'm afraid, but I'm feeling fear. Huh, that's so interesting. And you know what? I'm going to let myself feel it. I'm not going to run from it. I'm not going to try to switch my mindset to not feel this fear anymore. I'm going to just let myself feel the fear because now I'm educated because Jeremiah very nicely educated me through Universal Mastery on YouTube, that feeling the emotion is what's actually doing the healing. It's what's doing the alchemical processing and transmutation, turning that negative emotion into a positive. This is what turning lead into gold actually is. And for those of you that want to have a good visual of this understanding, um, a, a great, so there's a, there's a celebrity that always like comes to the forefront of my mind when I talk about this stuff. And this celebrity, his name is Jim Carrey. First and foremost, he's one of my favorite actors. I think he's one of the most phenomenal actors that literally ever existed. This guy had levels of charisma that was beyond what I think most people have an ability to tap into. He had an ability to, you could just tell when he walks into a room he changes the entire energy flow within the entire room because of his presence. So for those of you that don't know Jim Carrey, go on YouTube, search in the YouTube bar, Jim Carrey interviews, and look at his interviews that are back from the 2000s, 2010, somewhere around that range. Because Jim Carrey is an amazing example of someone who for a very long time was wearing a very strong mask in life. And he was doing this because of his past trauma. Now, this may not be exactly what he speaks about publicly. Um, I'm sure he's aware of it, but this is why people wear these really profound masks and why they can seem to the public like everything's perfect. They can seem like they're larger than life. Jim Carrey was a great example of this. And even as I say this, it's interesting because there's a movie that he stars in that is literally called The Mask. 
It's so interesting. There's an entire movie that he was the main character in called The Mask. And Luke is my editor. Luke, if you're listening to this, if you could pull up a picture of this movie that I'm talking about, it's with Jim Carrey, and I believe it's titled The Mask. If you could pull up a picture, that would be awesome. It's interesting that divinely, this was a movie he he was scripted to play as the main character. And he he clearly was wearing a mask through a large portion of his life, especially in his um, famous career path of being an actor. And you can just tell, like when you watch his interviews, you're going to see him be larger than life. You're going to see him put on a, a persona. He's just so charismatic and... The reason why I'm speaking about Jim Carrey, because Jim Carrey is not the only one that wears a mask. There are many celebrities that wear masks. Jim Carrey, his mask was very powerful. I mean, it was very energetically charged. But the reason why I'm really speaking about him is because he ended up having a spiritual awakening. I want to say somewhere around, I literally want to say maybe like seven years ago. So this is probably around 2000. 16 2017 somewhere around maybe that time frame he had a spiritual awakening i woke up and i suddenly got it i understood suddenly how thought was just an illusory thing and how thought is responsible for if not all most of the suffering we experience and then I suddenly felt like I was looking at these thoughts from another perspective. And I wondered, who is it that's aware that I'm thinking? And suddenly I was thrown into this expansive, amazing feeling of freedom from myself, from my problems. I saw that I was bigger than what I do. I was bigger than my body. I was everything and everyone. I was no longer a fragment of the universe. I was the universe. And if you look at him now in the way that he speaks, the way that he sounds, the way that he looks, the way that he carries himself, he is literally like a completely different person. And you can look this up on YouTube as well. I highly encourage you to do your own digging with this. Look up Jim Carrey Spiritual Awakening on YouTube and you can watch him go through this massive transformation. But this is an amazing opportunity to observe someone who was really in the limelight, wearing a mask, trying to maintain this identity because they were running away from repressed emotions from their past traumas. That's all he was doing. He wanted to be the best actor on the, in the world because of his trauma. And when he had a spiritual awakening and he started to realize who he truly was, he retired from acting. He's not an actor anymore right now, okay? He became a painter. He was an artist the whole time. And, and look, acting is definitely an art for sure. But he became a painter, which is a completely different type of art than acting. Completely different. So the whole time inside of his true self, his purpose and his passion was to create art, specifically along the lines of painting on canvases and just being completely creative with his painting. But because of his trauma from his past, there was such severe trauma, such negative repressed emotions, he ended up becoming this character that was larger than life in the limelight, and he chose a career path that would help fuel that character which was acting and him becoming a famous actor. And then as he progressed, he literally, I don't know what triggered it for sure. I have no idea, but he, he definitely must have had the intention to 
knowing his true self. Otherwise, this wouldn't have took place for him. But something happened and it caused him to have a spiritual awakening. Some could call it like a Kundalini awakening. Some could call it a true self realization. He had that moment and he shifted drastically. So once again, I, I, I encourage you to watch his old interviews back in like the 2010s to where he is now 2023. And you're going to see a completely different person. The same body, same vehicle, same vessel, different energy completely. Complete like night and day. And he's so much more authentic now. You can, you can actually connect. You can see that he's actually there. You can see when he speaks, he's speaking with emotion now. He's speaking with his soul. Whereas previously, in his old character, self, you could see everything he was doing was for a reaction. He would say things to trigger reactions from the environment. So he knew how to be funny. He knew that if he was charismatic, he would get reactions from the crowd. He was able to better control the external environment in his way. Whereas now that he's integrating with his true self, you, you can tell he's not doing what he's doing for a reaction. He's doing it for himself. He's saying what he actually feels now. And he's a lot more calm. He's way less charismatic. And it's beautiful to see that. You know, it's a man who's starting to own his power back and not just be projecting all of that energy outwards, but being more um, reflective and being more magnetic, saying, you know what? I've given a lot of myself away to, to, to entertain now I'm going to entertain myself by being my true self. So I brought up Jim Carrey just so that you as a listener can see someone who has gone through this type of trauma from their childhood, has put on an entire persona to cope, became larger than life, had a spiritual awakening, then they started integrating their true self. Now they're a completely different person and they're so much more authentic, so much more grounded. And I can guarantee you he's a lot happier now a lot more satisfied and has a sense of safety in his life. All right. So we talked about the three main traumas, consistent stress, shock trauma, something very significant that shocks us. And then the most common out of all the three, most of us, all of us have this one. Most of us early childhood de developmental trauma. And as we start to trace these things back to the roots and we start to ask ourselves these reflective questions like, is it possible that I'm in the situation I am now because of my parents, because of the way I was raised, because of what was in my environment, because of my lack of foundation and all these other things, we can start really uncovering the truth within ourselves, And we can say, you know what? I may not have been gifted the best set of cards in life. But I'm aware of what happened now. And now that I'm aware of what happened, I can start the process of realizing I can change. And I can change this trajectory that I was already destined or set to walk down. I can be the one that shifts that entire energetic flow to start becoming something different than what my family has ever seen before. Something different in the entire bloodline. And I can be the person that does this. And that in itself is liberating. All right. So with this, I just gave you some very deep knowledge and very deep education on trauma. And I gave you some really good examples to understand these different levels of trauma. And then as I spoke about Jim Carrey, this is giving you like a real life um, thing that you can study and dig deeper with to understand what I'm talking about right now and how significant it is to know these things. As you start to really dissect this information that I'm talking about, you're going to start noticing changes within yourself. You're going to start seeing that your awareness starts to shift. It's going to start changing. You're going to start viewing things a little bit differently. And at first, this can be a little bit strange. It can be a little bit scary even. But within time, you'll see that this shift in awareness will turn into a gift. Just continue sitting with it, continue doing your own integration so that you can start grounding and processing everything that's changing, all right? And once again, I, I really do encourage you, if you're listening to this and you're looking to do this deeper work with a professional like myself,
who can observe you and help navigate what you're going through. If you don't know how to navigate it yourself, if you feel like there's parts of yourself that you're not seeing right now and that you don't really fully understand, or maybe you just want simply more closure on, it can be amazing working with a professional that can help you through that process to guide you, to literally hold your hand and say, look, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go here, and we're gonna go here, and this is what I want you to do throughout this process to better you know, go through this experience. And once we establish that safety net and that foundation, this stays with you for the rest of your life. So if you're looking to do that work with me, the second link below is how you can book the mentorship. Now, with that being said, this is where I'm going to wrap it up. If you enjoyed this video, if you got value from it, if this spoke to you on a deep level, come down here and hit the thumbs up button. Go down, hit that thumbs up. That's what lets me know that this was valuable for you. Now also, come down and hit the notification bell. Make sure you're getting notified whenever I'm posting this content because absolutely this content is extremely valuable and you don't really hear this many other places. In a world where there's so much craziness and there's so much on to the next thing, on to the next thing, it can be so important to just listen to a video like this where we're talking about real deal, psychological, emotional, mental, and physical things that are taking place. And don't let me forget spiritual. <laughs> and to really unpack some of these things so we can understand what's happening on, you know, in the world around us. This gives us a really deep way to view reality itself and understand ourself in connection with our environments. So drop down in that comment section and let me know how this influenced you. Let me know if your perception is starting to shift a little bit. Let me know if you're noticing some of the things that are connected to your past, maybe your parents that you're noticing right now in your present moment are still affecting you. I'm very curious to hear all of these things. So drop down and let me know. Now come down here and hit the subscribe button because by subscribing, you are further linking into this content. Really, there's an energetic and a psychic component that goes behind that. So when you subscribe, you're getting more energy that is able to transfer from me and go to you. So if that's what you want, take advantage of it. If you don't want that energetic transfer, forget about it. All right, now I'm gonna say this, go and check out the private Facebook community. If you drop down in that YouTube description, scroll down, you're gonna see a link, it says private Facebook community. You click it, you can request to join. At this point, there's over a thousand members. There are people posting on a daily basis. This is like a really healthy group where you can express yourself, especially when it comes to like spiritual phenomena or things that you've been through in life, and you're not gonna get judged by other people. Most likely there's going to be other people that completely resonate with your experience and are gonna be able to give you some actually valuable feedback on what you might be going through, all right? There have also been real life relationships and close friendships that have been formed from this group as well. So it really is a powerful community. And if you wanna take advantage of it, you know where to go. I'm just giving you the opportunity, all right? We'll leave it there. Now. I'm going to take your awareness to the most important link within the entire description itself. It's the first link at the very top. This is where you can join my Patreon. On my Patreon, I have an entire grouping of videos that are primarily geared around the occult, sharing occult knowledge and information most people do not understand and most people don't have. Also covering the stuff that I'm talking about now when it comes to the nervous system and how trauma functions, where I also give practices, occult rituals, occult practices, and practices in general that help to regulate the nervous system, help to get you in the position where you can start creating a foundation for yourself. All right, so I have all of this exclusive content that's more advanced and more personal than what you're getting on my public YouTube channel over on the Patreon. So if you've been getting value from my public YouTube channel and you are not yet a Patreon member, then you're making a big mistake. So I would highly encourage you to make that investment. It's, I mean, it's literally costs nothing. So at the tier number three, it's $50 a month, okay? If you're serious about your self-development and you want to educate yourself in ways that most people aren't getting educated, that can really set the stage for you to better go through your healing journey or go through your self-development journey, then you need to find a way to find this $50 and invest into a Patreon, like what I'm offering, that can bring you through this education. Yourself will thank you, all right? So that's what I'm gonna say. They say, when there's a will, there's a way. That's 100% sure. With tier number three of the Patreon, you're gaining access to something that's extremely unique. You're not gonna find this literally probably anywhere else. I don't know anyone or anywhere that is offering this type of dynamic 
service that I offer. Tier number three gives you access to what is called the Vampire Ritual Service. This is a service that I offer to the public that is an actual advanced ritual that's performed on the 29th of every single month that has one on the new participants and the reoccurring participants to completely shift their energetic structures, their energy bodies. Rather than the energy field spinning in a clockwise direction most of the time, the shift is designed to start spinning it in a counterclockwise way, which starts to take the flow of energy around the energy body and start bringing it in more. It starts pulling inwards becomes more magnetic, starts tuning into that feminine energy a lot more effectively, and it sets the stage for you to start loving yourself a lot more than maybe what you've previously been doing. So as I was saying, this sets the stage for you to be a lot more receptive to what is inside of your body. So it can start pulling out some of these negative repressed emotions and it can bring them to the surface that, so that you can start feeling them and going through the processing of what the feeling is doing with these emotions. So this is transmutation. This also gives these individuals an ability to instead of seeing dark energy and chaos in the environment as being wrong or bad or evil, it starts to shift your perception to see these things for what they really are, which is power and potential. So there's a transmutation that takes place for the members of the service that are able to take this dark energy in the environment and chaos in the environment to turn it into power and evolutionary potential. This really starts to set the stage for you to start claiming your power back so that you're no longer running away from your own darkness. Because at the end of the day, a vampire is someone that lives in darkness and finds safety and finds comfort in that darkness because they're transmuting it into something more powerful. They're transmuting literally darkness into light. So if this is something that you wanna take advantage of, this is gonna be tier number three of the Patreon. Now on top of that, when you're a tier number three member or tier number four, so tier number four or three gives you access to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be asking you, reaching out to you personally, getting your picture, an actual picture of you with your full name, your birth location, and the state that you actually live in. And I'm gonna have it all linked on a piece of paper, and I'm going to be placing it in this Atlantean crystal grid that I have that is designed to help with this integration process, this true self integration process. It's designed to help you pull out negative energies in your body to turn them into positive. It's designed to help protect you from 5G, radio waves or protect you from inorganic energies that could potentially be harmful when they're out of balance. So what it does is it wakes up certain carbon structures in your own cells and in your own genetic code so that it can start detoxing more effectively and balancing out these 5G radio waves that we get from our phones, we get from cell towers, we get from satellites, wherever it's coming from. So it's, and there's many other benefits there. I have an entire Taurus field that's in the crystal grid, which even as we speak right now, it's constantly plugged in, pumping out frequencies into the crystal grid, all right? If you wanna study a little bit more about this crystal grid, I have an entire video on my YouTube channel, which goes into depth with how it functions and everything that's pretty much taking place with it. So if that's something you're interested in, check it out. But this is also included with the vampire service. So if you're someone who receives the service, you also, get to be placed inside of this advanced Atlantean crystal grid. And this is some next level technology. This is some next level science that most people are not aware of. Most people don't think works yet. There's more and more people that are waking up to how this stuff works. But as of right now, I, I believe I'm like one of the only people that is offering an actual ritual service to the public in combination with combining it with placing them inside of a crystal grid that is designed to help them further integrate their true self and transmute negative dark energy chaos energy into their power and evolutionary potential so once again if this is something you're interested in check it out all of this is in that first link in the youtube description right down there at the patreon and this would be tier number three or tier four where you get access tier four has some additional benefits you can read over that if you're interested. Now, with that being said, that's going to wrap that up there. All right. So now I'm going to take your awareness to the second link in the YouTube description. This 
is where you can book a mentorship with me. So as I was saying multiple times throughout this video, if you're looking to find this foundation within yourself so that you can be better prepared to go into the deeper levels of spiritual self-development, I would highly recommend working with me so that you can have me as a guide to help you navigate through this, this process that can be quite complex. Okay, I sure wish when I was getting into the deeper levels of a cult initiation, I sure wish I had a guide with me throughout that process. Like an actual guide that I paid for that could be with there and literally answer all of my questions and help call me out on things that maybe I wasn't aware of. Thankfully, you know, at that time I attracted a guide, but it wasn't a guide that was with me through the whole process. I had him for certain periods of time and then he would be gone. But you know, if you invest in yourself, you can literally invest in having someone like myself to be with you through the process, helping you understand what's taking place so that you can go through it and get the most out of it by integrating the actual experience rather than going down a dark path, falling into cycles of unhealthy coping and literally becoming worse off than when you started. Okay, I have seen good friends of mine get into this occult ritualistic process of initiation and unfortunately some of them i've seen lose their mind i've seen people go from being somewhat stable to losing everything this one person that comes to my mind i don't know where he is till this day and it's unfortunate because this was someone i considered a friend and i had love for you know i cared about him um, but there were some things that he was unwilling to change unwilling to shift which i try to make him aware of and he just, he didn't see the importance behind it and it ended up circling back and it got him. But where I'm at now, I'm definitely a more educated teacher than I was a while ago. So I have a very strong ability to make my students aware of things they need to know as they progress through these processes of self-development, occult initiation. If this resonates with you, second link below, you have the mentorships. If you are curious about what I'm talking about and you wanna ask me some questions along those lines, you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me, okay? Definitely look into that if you wanna get a taste of what working with me could be like, all right? We'll leave that there. Now, as we move into the, the next thing I wanna take your awareness to, it's also in that same second link. <laughs> okay, the same second link below. This is where you can book an extremely unique tarot card reading from me. This is a tarot card reading that I promise you have never received before, like never received before. The reason is, is because I understand the Kabbalistic tree way more than the average person. So I can literally pinpoint where you are on this structure. I can tell you what you're feeling, experiencing, and going through in the present moment, also based on the structure on where you're located. And then I can tell you what to expect moving into your near and your long-term future, all right? The way that I break down these cards is in a very raw and honest fashion. So the way that the cards are showing me what it is that you need to know, that's exactly how I'm going to give it to you. This is not going to be a reading that is sugar-coated by any means where I'm just gonna make it all love and light and make it something you want to hear. This is something that I'm gonna say that you need to hear so that you can use it to your advantage, all right? Second link below, if you're interested, I've done well over 2,000 of these readings. I get tons of valuable feedback. I do a reading almost every single day. Definitely look into it if you're interested. All right, now we're gonna move into the third link in the YouTube description. You can't miss it there, it's the third link. Third link is where you can become a YouTube member. And as you become a YouTube member, you're gaining access to a multitude of different benefits. But most importantly, you are gaining access to what is called the Psychic Warfare Emoji Program. This is a sequence of emojis that I've designed myself that are based on real occult principles, and you can use them in a certain configuration. You link in the name of a target, you hit enter, and it actually will start to cause psychic effects to the target of your choice. It's the most simple form of using psychic warfare on the internet platform, and it's also an amazing way to express healthy aggression as well. There's over 2,000 posts where members have used it already, there are members in this moment taking advantage of it. If this is something that you wanna take advantage of for yourself, you can definitely do so. You click that third link in the YouTube description, you join at the top, and then you have access. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly where I'm going to wrap it up. I appreciate all of you very, very, very much, and I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.